Today's the day that we actually start to knit on our spa robe. We'll be working on the back. Before we get started, I want to invite you to send me pictures of the robes that you make and or yourself working on the robe so that we can finish up this video series with a video photo album of all the things people have made. If you include alterations you have made, yarn experiences, yarn substitutions, and so forth, I can include those things to help future knitters. Here's how to send me your contributions. Visit my homepage, theanswerlady.com, click on new contact information, and on the destination page is the email address to use. Sending me something confirms your permission for me to use that in a video. I will only use your name if you tell me what it is and specifically give me permission in your email. If you want a written copy of the pattern, it's now up on Ravelry. I will put a link in the program notes. It's sold as a PDF. These are readable on any number of devices with free software. And of course, you're welcome to print it out as long as it's for your own use. The Ravelry version has several sleeve variations including longer sleeves and wider sleeves than those shown here. In the video series, we'll just do them like this. Country Knitting of Maine News and Views magazine will also have a version, but I don't know yet exactly when it will appear. This is the shape of the piece we'll be knitting today. Although this drawing is not to scale, I wanted it to fit neatly on the screen. Proportionately, the real garment is longer. We'll start with hand-manipulated knit two purl one ribbing, knit straight up to the armhole, bind off eight stitches on each side, knit straight up to the garment top, finish the back neck area with some ribbing by reforming, and bind off. Start by casting on the number of stitches shown on the screen for your size. You may use any cast on that you like to have at the lower edge of a garment. I am chain stitching across and I'm doing so left-handed, which is why I'm a klutz, but that's so that you can see what's going on. Bond knitters, you will want to start with your weighted hem, knit a few rows of waist yarn, followed by a ravel cord, and then do this. Then you won't have any trouble. And anybody else who has trouble knitting back from a cast on can use the same technique. Some hobby machines won't have enough needles for the two largest sizes. If that is the case, you can still work the pattern by knitting the back in halves. To do this, cast on 52 or 56 stitches for sizes 50 and 54 finished chest. And when we come to the armhole shaping, do that only on one side. The other side will be a center back seam and there is an entire stitch allowed for it. We will now knit 20 plain rows, but I like to knit across one time then hang these weights. Different models of machine require different amounts of weight and you know yours best so you decide whether you need weight and if so how much. Now we'll just proceed to finish knitting 20 rows. These rows are at the main stitch size. That's because the bottom hem is meant to stop rolling not to pull in. Now we will hand latch some ribbing for the bottom edge by dropping the third stitch and every third stitch thereafter, laddering down 19 of the 20 rows, putting the latch tool into the first true stitch, and then you'll have 19 more rows to latch up, hang the final stitch on its original needle. Using Knit 2 Purl 1 ribbing does a few things for us. It lessens the amount of work involved in hand latching the ribbing, it is enough to stop rolling, but it doesn't pull in as much as one by one ribbing. And we don't want pulling in here, so that's a plus. And it's kind of a fresh, sporty look on the finished garment. Repeat this process on every third needle all the way across the work. When you have laddered down and reformed the final column of stitches, there should remain two undisturbed knit stitches on the other edge of the work. That means there will be two on each edge and this makes for neat seaming later and a good match of the side pieces. We've been using the exact number of stitches to make the hem come out right. Now we need to make a change but 
only for sizes 46 and 50. Size 46 increase one on each side of the work. Size 50 increase one on one side of the work only. Restore your weights if you're using any and continue knitting straight. Here's a little note for those who bought 11 ounce balls of yarn as I did. I wanted to see if I really needed to rewind it, so I didn't. I pulled the center out and loosened it up for the first few yards so that I could feed without restriction because you know the center of that ball is tight. Then I propped the ball up between another cone of yarn and my tool bin and it is successfully feeding from the interior of the yarn ball and going through the tensioner without much trouble. Rewinding is undoubtedly safer, but this did work. For average women, knit to row 130. For men and taller women, knit to row 140. After completing either row 130 or 140, bind off 8 stitches on the carriage side. If you're knitting in halves, you'll only do this on one side. When eight stitches have been bound off, rethread the carriage, knit across. The counter will now read 131 or 141 and bind off eight stitches. If you're knitting in halves, this will be what you do on the second half. Only bind off on the right one time and on the left one time. That way you'll have a straight center for the center back seam. From here on, the knitting is straight up the back. Rethread the carriage, resume knitting, and knit straight until either row 188 or 198 is complete. Row 198 is again for taller women and most men. Here's our almost completed back. Now we simply need to finish the neckline and bind off. Take note of the center 26 stitches. Ladder down every other one of those stitches for eight rows and latch it back up as a purl stitch. This process finishes the center back neck so that it won't roll and it is somewhat elastic. Bind off all of the stitches beginning on the side where the carriage was so that you can work with the existing yarn tail. And use any bind off that you like the looks of, but remember that it will show at the center back neck. Also, I like the latch tool around the gate pegs bind off because it automatically spaces your stitches. But for hobby machines, you can get a similar look, nearly identical actually, using the transfer bind off. With the transfer bind off, however, you don't get the automatic spacing. So make sure not to over tighten your bind off. We don't want this fabric to get pulled in by the bind off. We want it to be neutral. And here we are, the finished back piece. If you're knitting along in real time, the next video will be up in two or three days. This is May of 1922. For those watching sometime in the future, the whole series will already be up and you can just move on to the next video now.